All right, chapter four, alkanes and cycloalkanes. <clears throat> All right, so we haven't really talked much about alkanes so far. All right, and cycloalkanes also not that much in detail. All right, so let's start with alkanes. So what are alkanes? So organic compounds that has only carbon <clears throat> and carbon hydrogen. Okay, so when we say carbon and carbon hydrogen, we are only talking about either carbon carbon single bond or carbon hydrogen single bond. Okay, so any organic molecule that has only these two things in it, that is an alkane. All right. So what would be cycloalkane then? So cycloalkane is just a ring structure. So let's say if you have just a carbon-carbon bond, okay, and carbon-hydrogen, nothing else but a ring, those are cycloalkanes, like cyclohexane. All right. So cyclohexane is your alkane. Right. In this case, the best example is methane. So we have CH4 that has only carbon and hydrogen, okay? Nothing beyond this, no double bond, no triple bond. So that is your alkane. So alkanes and cycloalkanes in general, all right? So we should be looking, okay, let's focus on alkanes first and then we'll go into detail on cycloalkanes, all right? So what kind of different alkanes we can have, okay? So let's say we have, <clears throat> so we'll make a chart that will give us all different types of alkanes or all different uh, chain size, right? So let's say we can have one carbon alkane, right? So one carbon is just one by itself, right? right. So that's one carbon alkane. So just one carbon and that is called as methane. All right. So we also call them as alkanes or, let's say, we also call them as alkanes or parent compounds. So just write down parent for now and I'll tell you why we, how we're gonna use them, all right? So your parent compounds, on these are the alkanes, right? So you can have one carbon alkane, which is methane, right? We can have two carbon alkane, which is a carbon-carbon bond. Okay, so we can have a CH3, CH3, so we have two carbons and that becomes ethane. So methane, ethane, right? So we can have three carbons. So three carbons I can write down like this. So you have one, two, and three carbons. So I don't have to write all the CH2 and the CH3s now. That becomes propane. Okay, so propane is the same, uh, propane is the same thing what you, what you buy, okay? Uh, the propane tank, what you buy, is the same gas, propane. Then you have butane. Okay, so that's a four carbon alkane. One, two, three, and four, right? So that's butane. <clears throat> and then five carbons will be. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. Five carbon alkane is pentane. All right. So we have to go all the way up to 10. So we found out one to five, okay? <clears throat> Let's say when you have six, then that will be so one, two, three, four, five, six, that will be hexane. Seven carbon. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven will be heptane. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight carbon is octane. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine carbon is nonane. And ten carbon is decane. So there's one, two, three, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So ten carbon is decane. All right. So these are the different parent alkanes. So we we absolutely have to know. Okay. So one through ten. Okay. So one carbon is methane, ethane, propane, butane, all the two decane. Okay. There are more than more than ten, but we would stop at decane. All right. So this is one chart. What we call that as parent. Okay. Or uh, that's going to be your that's a parent chain. Okay, we'll use it later on. So that's why I'm just putting down everything at one place. 
All right. So this is a chart where we write down all the alkanes together. All right. So you absolutely have to remember all these names. Okay. All right. So some of the alkanes you already know, such as octane. You might have seen it on the gas station. It says octane value. Okay. That means your gas has octane in it. Right. You might have seen butane, propane. Like that's your that's your barbecue gas. What you buy, the gas tank you buy. Okay. So that's your propane and butane. All right. So next part is substituents. So what kind of substituents we can have? All right. So what are the substituents? So we already saw parent compound, right? So it's parent chain. So once you have the parent chain and those branches that are attached to the parent chain, okay? So that's your substituents or branch, okay? Either way you call it, okay? So now we are looking at what kind of branches we can have, okay? We saw all the parents, one to 10, right? So you have methane, butane, propane, right? So what kind of branches we, we can have now, right? So how many carbons we have in the branch here? So we have one carbon. So one carbon alkane is methane, but since it's a substituent, methane becomes methyl. So that's how you change it. Okay, so we put a YL next to it. So instead of A and E, methane, we change it to methyl because it's a branch, it's not the chain. All right. So if you have two carbons, right, so this is your chain, let's say, and if you have two carbons, right, like this, CH2, CH3, right, or you can write down like this, right, so two carbons can be also like this, a carbon here and a carbon here, right, so if you have a branch like this, okay, and you count number of carbons, so you have one and two carbons, so two carbons alkane is methane, but since it's a branch now, that will change to so ethane will become ethyl. So ethane becomes ethyl, methane becomes methyl, right? So we have one carbon, two carbon, okay? So what will happen when you have three carbons, right? So three carbons can be like this, but you have one, two, and three carbons chain, okay? <clears throat> and that is called as, so three carbon is propane will become propyl. Yeah, propane becomes propyl and three carbons can also be like this okay, so these are the three carbons right there okay and that becomes isopropyl okay <clears throat> so methyl ethyl has only one way to write okay one carbon has only one way to do it and two carbons has only one way to write it but Propyl can be two different ways, okay? It can be just a normal propyl group where you have a CH2, CH2, CH3, or it can be attached to the second carbon on the chain, right? So this is your first carbon, one, two, and three, and this is your one, two, and three, so that will be a second carbon, okay? So how do I keep in mind? Okay, first, I count number of carbons. So I have three carbons and I have three carbons, so it has to be propyl, and what kind of propyl is that? If it's just a chain, it's propyl, and if you see a Y, Okay, if there's a Y, then that becomes isopropyl. Okay, but that's how I keep it in mind. Okay, and then we have four carbons, right? So four carbons can be like this. So that's your chain, and then you have one, two, three, and four. So four carbons can be like this. Okay, same, they can compare this. And that will be your butyl group. So that's your normal butyl group. All right then we can have four carbons like this. Right, so there are four carbons in the chain. Right, so one, two, three, and four. And you still see a Y here. So anytime you see a Y, okay, either Y with the three carbons or Y with the four carbons, I call that as isopropyl or four carbon becomes isobutyl. Okay, so easy to compare. If you see a Y, with four or Y with three, okay, isopropyl and isobutyl. Okay, then we have a branch like this. Okay, so we can have a branch like this where you have the four carbons: one, two, three, and four. Okay, <clears throat> that's attached to the second carbon. Let's say if I count carbons here: one, two, three, and four, that is attached to the attached with the second carbon. And that is secondary butyl. So we've got that as sec butyl. So sec hyphen butyl, okay? And then the last one, 
is you can have a cross. Okay, so a cross is one, two, three, and four carbons. So I still have a butyl group with four carbons, and that is called as tertiary butyl group or tert butyl. That's how you write it. All right. So again, one carbon branch is methyl. Okay. Two carbon branches is ethyl. Okay. Three carbon, just a chain, is propyl. Three carbons with a Y is iso. And you can compare iso with this iso here. Three carbons and four carbons, right? So that's your iso. The normal butyl group is like a propyl is like a butyl, right? With just a chain. Seg butyl is the only one which is a little tricky because it has it doesn't have a proper shape, right? Here you see Y. Here you see a normal chain. Here you see a cross. A cross is tertiary butyl group, all right? But seg butyl is the only one which you have to uh, keep in mind, or you have to spend a little more time on understanding that. All right. So these are the different branches we can have. Okay. And we already saw what kind of different chains we can have. All right. So two things: different uh, pattern compounds. Okay. So we can also call that as substituents or branches, and parent alkane or the parent chain. All right. Two different things. All right. So next part is nomenclature of alkanes. Right. So let's say if you have not just a normal chain, instead you have a lot of branches or you have a complex structure, then how do you name those compounds? Okay, and that's called as IUPAC nomenclature. So IUPAC stands for International Union for Pure and Applied Chemistry. Okay, so there's an organization that actually deals with different different aspects of chemistry, and one of them is how do you name nomen how do you name organic compounds? Okay, so they they put some rules together so you can name an organic compound, all right? So let's say we are trying to name this compound here. All right, so there's an organic compound right here. All right? And we have to name this compound, okay? So we have a structure and we're trying to name it. Right? So for that, we have to follow certain rules, okay? So we start with rule number one, okay? So rule number one is find the longest carbon chain, all right? So how do I find the longest carbon chain here now, okay? So there's no such rule, where do I start, okay? You're just looking at each and every chain, okay? Every carbon possible and finding the longest carbon chain, right? So if I start from here, okay? So that's your one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so starting from here, I have five carbon chain, right? If I start from here, then I have one, two, three, four, five, and six, okay? So six is the larger chain compared to five, so I found my longest carbon chain, which is this right here. So I can just go ahead and highlight those carbons. That's my longest carbon chain and not this one. All right, so when I find my longest carbon chain, then what's coming out of the chain becomes your branch, okay? So if this is your carbon chain, then that's your branch. And then what you have here is one carbon, so one carbon is a CH3, all right? So find the longest parent carbon, uh, longest carbon chain. So this is your six carbons, one, two, three, four, five, six, and six carbon is hexane. So your parent is hexane. Okay, so that's your parent, we found that. All right. Now, <clears throat> number the carbon atoms in chain, okay? So when you start numbering, okay, I can start numbering as one, two, three, four, five, and six, or I can go left to right, one, two, three, four, five, six. So the rule is each branch or each substituent, okay, so what branch you have is each branch should get the lowest possible number. Okay, so if I start from here, then I get one, two, and three, so branch gets number three. But if I start from here, then it's one, two, three, four. That means I have to start numbering left to right. Okay, so that would be number one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, but that way the branch get the lowest possible number. Okay, so that's your branch right here. All right, so we got point number one, we got point number two. Okay, we found the parent carbon chain, and then we number the carbon atoms in the chain. Okay, now the third point is name and number each substituent. Okay, substituent is branches. So how many branches we have? We only have one branch here, okay? So what kind of branch is that? It's a one carbon branch. So one carbon branch is methyl. So that is three methyl because that's on carbon three. 
Okay, so that is your three methyl. Okay, so we did point number one, two, and three. So we name and number it. So we name as methyl and <clears throat> number is that's that's the carbon number the branch is present on. That is carbon three. Okay, so we got three methyl and parent hexane. Okay, so point number four is not a real rule. We just have to put them together. Okay, so we pick up the branches and pick up the parent. Right. So we have three methyl. Okay, and hexane. So that's the nomenclature for this compound. Okay, so we just have to put the branches and the name and the parent together. Okay, now when you write <clears throat> nomenclature, you make sure there are no spaces and all the letters are small caps. Okay, and there also you can add numbers when you have a number and a letter that are separated by a hyphen. So number and letter are separated by hyphen. There should not be any spaces, okay? And when you have two numbers, then those should be separated by a comma. So it's not applied in this exam example, but we will see when the example, when you see two different numbers here, then I'll tell you how to handle them. But for now, make sure your letter and number should be separated by hyphen and all the letters should be in the small caps, okay? So these are simple rules, okay? You can follow them at, at this point or later on, basically you're not even looking at those rules, you just get used to it, all right? So what we'll do now is instead of just doing simple examples, okay, I will I'll write down a few complex examples and we'll see how can we name those compounds, all right? So here, let's say if I have right. <clears throat> so a structure like this. Let's say I have all right, so I'm going to call it all right. <clears throat> so in this case, how do I find the longest carbon chain? All right. <clears throat> so again, start from each end and find out which is the longest, right? So I can start from here. If I start from here, that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, right? If I start from here, then this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, so I found out the largest number, which is number eight, and that is your. So I'm just going to go ahead and highlight the carbon chain right here. So that's your longest carbon chain. All right, with eight carbons. <clears throat> okay, so this carbon doesn't count. There. So here I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. All right. Now we go with rule number two. <clears throat> number the carbon atoms in chain. All right. So I can start numbering as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay. Because then the substituent will get the lowest possible number. All right. So that will be one, two, three, four, seven, and eight. All right. If I start numbering this as one then your branch will start at five, sorry, four. So that will become four, five, and six. But if I go this way, then that will be three, four, five. So three, four, five is a smaller number than four, five, and six. So that's why I had to go with this way. All right, so we did step one and step two. Don't forget to write down the parent compound, which is eight is octane. So your parent is octane, all right? Uh, let's go with point number three now. <clears throat> so name and number each substituent, right? So what kind of substituent do we have, okay? So what kind of branches we have now? So this is your chain, okay? So that will become your branch. So that's you have a CH3. That's your branch one, right? Then you have another branch at carbon five. That's also a CH3, right? And then you have another branch at carbon four, right? So how do I find out what kind of branch is that? So first count number of carbons. So that branch has two carbons, right? I'm not counting this carbon because that's a part of the chain. Carbon four is a part of the chain, so I'm not counting that. I'm counting the other carbons, not this one, right? So you have two carbons in the branch, okay? So two carbons is ethane, so this is your ethyl. Okay, so ethane becomes ethyl, okay? So we have 
थ्री मैथा हो पॉइंट फाइव मैथा हो एंड फोर मैथा हो पॉइंट सो बिकॉज यू हैड नेम एंड नंबर द ब्रांचेस और सब्सिट्यूएंट सो दिस इज व्हाट वी हैव मैथा मैथा एंड एथा ओके नाउ इफ यू कंपेयर द प्रीवियस एग्जांपल ओके वी ओनली हैड वन ब्रांच सो वी जस्ट रोड डाउन substituents and parents or branch and parent together right what if we if we have more than one then how do we put them together okay we we'll still have to go with the branches first and then the parent okay so octane will go at the end okay so how do you put then these together then all right so <clears throat> we alphabetize them okay when you put them together then alphabetically whichever comes first goes first right so ethyl goes before methyl all right so then you start with 4 ethyl right and then we have 3 methyl 5 methyl so instead of writing 3 methyl and 5 methyl what we write is we write 3 comma 5 okay hyphen di methyl di means 2 so we have 1 and 2 is a di methyl and then you write down your parent compound which is octane again a number and a letter should be separated by a hyphen and two numbers should be separated by a comma all right a number and letter should be separated by a hyphen again all right so you have to make sure that when you have multiples of the same branches so say you have methyl and a methyl so you don't have to write a methyl methyl instead you write as a dimethyl if you have two if you have three then tri if you have four then tetra if you have five penta six hexa okay so so forth all right so that is the nomenclature of this compound okay so that is 4 ethyl 3 5 dimethyl octane all right so let's try to name this compound all right let's see how can we handle this all right so again i'm not following the rules now i mean i i don't have the rules written here but we can just go one after another okay so how many carbons we have we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 right so if i go the straight chain here i have nine carbons right if i go from here let's just start from one end right so if i start from here with 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so i have nine here okay and this way i have eight okay if i go from here then so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 okay or i can go this way either way is fine this way or this way So I have nine carbons here. All right. So I can start from here. Then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So the longest carbon chain I found now are two of them. Okay. So if I start from left to right and go across here, that is also nine. And if I go from here and go all the way up here, that is also nine. Okay. So when you have the two chains of the same size, then how do I choose the right chain? Okay. Again, in nomenclature, you can only have one parent chain. You cannot have two, right? So in this case, when you have two of those, then the rule is go with the chain that has the most number of substituents or most number of branches. So whichever chain has most number of branches, then you go with that, right? So if I go with this chain right here, right, then you will have two branches. This will be the branch, and this will be the branch. Right. So if I choose this across from left to right, but if I go with this chain, then I will have one, two, and three branches. Okay. So this chain right here will have one, two, and three branches. So that means I have to go with this chain right here. Right. So then your carbons will be these two, or you can go this way. Either this way or this way is going to be same. Right. So this is my pair and carbon chain and i have nine carbons in here so that will become nine carbon is nonane my parent is nonane all right and now we number the carbon atoms right so start numbering now so we have i can have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 or 1 2 3 4 5 but if i start from here the substituents are not getting the smallest number possible Okay, but if I start from here, then I will get two, four, five. If I start from here, then I will get five, six, and eight. So this will be the smallest number possible this way. 
meter and nine. Okay, so these are my all the carbons in the chain. All right, so let's find out what kind of substituents we have or what kind of branches I have, right? So this is a metal, one carbon is a metal. So I have here two metal, right? Then you have how many carbons in the chain? One, two, and three. So this is a normal, just a chain with three carbons so that will be your propyl group, all right? And then you have here, okay, the other chain you have branch, sorry, you have is one, two, three, and four carbons, okay? Four carbons and attached to a second carbon right here. So that is your sec butyl group, all right? So then let's put the name together, right? So you have two metal, four propyl, and five sec butyl, so five sec butyl, right? So how do I name it then, okay? We alphabetize, okay? So when we alphabetize, you go with M, P, and in case of sec, we go with butyl, okay? So if you if you go back to your chart where we wrote down all these uh, branches, right? All the different branches we can have, then you can see I underlined all those letters, okay? So the underlined letter means that means you have to go with that when you alphabetize them, okay? So butyl will go, okay, first, that will be five sec butyl. Right, then, <clears throat> then goes with M, right? So, so M and OP. So M, that will be two methyl. Then you have four propyl, and your parent is nonin. So there's a nomenclature for this compound. All right. Again, no spaces. All the small caps. And number and letter should be separated by a hyphen, okay? So number and letter should be separated by a hyphen. All right. Let's try this one. All right. <clears throat> so again, go ahead and find out the longest carbon chain, right? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So I found my longest carbon chain, which is this right here. Or I can go from here, that's it's the same thing, all right? So that's our longest carbon chain, right? So we have, <clears throat> so we can start numbering them from this side because then the substituent or each branch would get the lowest possible number. So that'll be one, two, three, four. And nine, all right? So we have two methyl. So two metal, right? Five has three carbons with a Y, so that will be isopropyl. So that will be five isopropyl, right? And carbon six has two branches, right? So carbon six has, there's two carbons here and the two carbons here. So you have ethyl and ethyl. So we have six ethyl and we also have six ethyl. Right, so there's one branch here and there's one branch here. Right, so we have six ethyl and six ethyl. Right? <clears throat> so then let's put the name together. Right? So here it will be. You have E, I, and M. <clears throat> so we write down six, six. Right, so there will be six, six diethyl. All right, so keep in mind when you say di, tri, tetra, we don't alphabetize them. We only alphabetize the branches. Okay, so diethyl. Okay, then <clears throat> there will be five isopropyl. Then comes your two methyl. Okay. And then your parent compound, and that will be. So you have nine carbons to be known. All right, so that's how you write your nomenclature.